going on guys? It is an exciting Sunday night in the lonely trailer in the swamp in Dunellen, Florida here on this lovely Sunday, November 6, 2023 where I have no internet. So I have found myself <laughs> somehow, life is strange. <coughs> with a copy of a manuscript I uh, wrote when I was 21 years old in 1980 <coughs> titled Maurice and the Rainbow Maker. Maurice, otherwise known as Mo the Mole. And uh, for the few of you sticking with me, I do appreciate it. So we are heading into chapter five of our seven chapter adventure uh, as our little mole in the ground goes heading, <clears throat> looking for the rainbow maker. And uh, he has heard a rumor that the rainbow maker lives atop the pinnacle of perfection and as soon as he attains the pinnacle of perfection, he will find the Rainbow Maker. Chapter 5, The Pinnacle of Perfection. <clears throat> Maurice ran as fast as he could toward the west, and the mountains slowly got closer and closer. Soon the land started getting hilly, Mo would huff and puff his way up one side of a hill and slide down the other side on his belly. It was great fun, the first fun he'd had in a long time. <clears throat> Mo noticed something very odd about the hills. They all looked like feet. Some looked like duck's feet. Others looked like cat's paws. Others looked just like a little boy's foot with his big toes sticking out of his sneaker. Mo thought he'd better ask directions. He heard what sounded like someone humming happily, happily inside a barrel, and he went to investigate the sound. Cresting the top of the hill that looked like a chicken's foot, Mo saw what must have been his millionth strange sight. In two days, a hibiscus bush sprouted from the hillside, its billowy red flowers decorating its lovely green leaves like ornaments on a Christmas tree. From the middle of one of the big flowers sprung a spray of bright green, green feathers, though Mo could not see a bird attached to them. Strangest of all, the feathery flower seemed to be humming a tune. <clears throat> Mo sniffed the flower and it seemed to explode. The noise stopped and the feathers shot out of the flower, hitting Mo in the face and knocking him over backwards. Looking up from the ground, Mo saw a tiny green bird, smaller than himself, with a white belly, a long bill, and what looked like a ruby necklace hanging from its throat. <clears throat> I'm sorry I bashed into you like that, said the little bird, who was hovering like a tiny helicopter above Mo's head. I guess you surprised me. Quite all right, said Mo, standing up and cleaning himself off. My name is Mo. Mine is Wink, said the little bird. I'm a ruby-throated hummingbird, if you didn't figure that out by now. <clears throat> he hummed a few bars of In the Mood by Glenn Miller. Actually, I didn't know, answered Mo, but I th couldn't think of a better name. You do hum beautifully. Thank you, said Wink. He began humming Hummingbird by Leon Russell, his favorite song. I have to interrupt your love. I hate to interrupt your lovely song," said Mo. "But could you please tell me where I am? Why, you're in the foothills. Can't you tell?" said Wink. 
I should have figured that out, said Mo. Say, how far is it to the pinnacle of perfection? Well, you should be at the bottom of it in about a half hour, said Wink, but you'll probably never make it to the top of it. You should never set your sights on reaching the pinnacle of perfection because it's impossible to reach, as you will find out. Mo is going to ask the bird what he was talking about, but poof, the little bird was gone, quick as a wink. Maurice was troubled by what Wink had said. He made it this far, and he wasn't about to give up now. But he had to admit the going was getting much rougher. The last foothill, which looked like a knee-high cowboy boot, was almost a mountain itself. The walking became tougher, the foothills became mountains, and then suddenly there it was, the pinnacle of perfection. The huge mountain was mightier than anything Mo had ever seen, like a tiger lily looming above a patch of pansies. It dwarfed the other mountains. Mo had to lie down on his back to see the whole thing. He saw where the trees ended in grass, where the grass ended in sheer rock, where the rock ended in snow, and where even the snow-capped peak was hidden behind a frothy swirl of clouds. A twinge of panic shot through the little mole. Mo knew he would never reach the pinnacle of perfection by lying around on his back all day. He got back to his feet and headed into the woods at the bottom of the mountain. Every tree Every leaf and every rock in the forest was perfect. There was not a crooked tree or yellow leaf to be seen. Mo thought the forest was very pretty, but at the same time it was strangely almost boring. Everything looked just the same, even though all the trees and flowers were perfectly beautiful. You couldn't tell one from the other. There was one tree that stood out from all the others, though, and it was that tree that caught Mo's attention. It was always the thing that stood out from the others that caught Mo's attention. This tree was different from any tree Mo had ever seen. Whereas most trees were covered with bark, leaves, and branches, this tree was covered with fantastic, brightly colored carvings of people's faces. I wonder what kind of tree this is, Mo said out loud, even though he was the only one there. That was what was so fun about being in the woods alone. Mo could talk out loud to himself and nobody was there to think he was weird. But somebody was there because Mo had his question answered. This isn't a tree. This is a totem pole, the deep voice said. Maurice saw the voice was coming from the lowest carving on the totem pole. Who are you, Mo asked. He never heard a tree or anything that looked like a tree talk before, although he once thought he was speaking to a talking mushroom. <clears throat> I'm the low man on the totem pole, the carving said. For 20 years I've sat here on the ground at the bottom of this pole in the woods at the bottom of the pinnacle of perfection. I'm getting so tired of being on the bottom all the time. Well then, why don't you move up? asked Mo. Some people acted like they had blocks of wood for brains. He thought, I can't move, said the low man on the totem pole. My nose is too big. What on earth does the size of your nose have to do with you being able to move, asked Mo. <clears throat> the world down below was much less complicated than up above. To move up 
the pinnacle of perfection, you have to be perfect, explained the low man on the totem pole. My nose is too big, so I'm not perfect. I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. But it's not your fault how big your nose is, said Mo. Some things in life can't change, and the size of your nose is one of them. And it's a very minor thing, I may add. I've learned to live with it, said the carving, but it still keeps me from ever reaching the pinnacle of perfection. Well, if reaching the pinnacle of perfection hinges on something you have no control over, I'm not sure it's such a great place to head to, said Mo. And if it means anything to you, I like you just fine the way you are, big nose and all. Thank you, you're very kind, said the low man on the totem pole. He cried a sticky tear of resin, and his too big nose sniffled. You take care of yourself, said Mo. I really must be <clears throat> going by. Goodbye, friend, said the low man on the totem pole. He sniffled one more big sniffle. It was a steep climb up the pinnacle of perfection, but the air was crisp and cool, so Maurice didn't get too tired. The air turned even cooler, and the perfect trees grew smaller and smaller, finally becoming perfect bushes and then perfect clumps of grass. Mo was thirsty after his hard climb. He heard the sound of rushing water, and he followed it to find something to drink. Maurice traced the sound to a bubbling fountain made of pink marble. Like everything else, the fountain was perfectly formed and perfectly beautiful. Water wasn't the only thing flowing from the fantastic fountain, Mo noticed. Floating around in the water were all sorts of words, numbers, and people's names, most of which Mo had never heard of. Mo bent over to drink, lowering his head between two water lily plants, one in full bloom and one full of buds. The thirsty little mole drank long and deeply. And number three slid down his throat, along with a swallow of cool, refreshing water. Mo stopped drinking to take a breath, and for some reason, something strange dawned on him. You can always tell if you can divide a number by three by adding up the digits in the number. If they add up to three, six, or nine, the number is divisible by three. Mo thought that was a very strange thing to be thinking about. He bent down to take another drink, and this time he swallowed the word dormer. The word dormer. <laughs> can't make this up. He finished drinking, and when he sat up, another strange thought popped into his head. A dormer is a small window that sticks out from the roof of a house. Mo had never seen a dormer before, but he would know a dormer if he ever did. But why did he think of it in the first place? Suddenly, Mo's thoughts were interrupted by the water lily in full bloom floating in the fountain. There are 742,000 466 bricks in the Empire State Building, the plant said. What? asked Mo, wondering what the Empire State Building had to do with dormer windows. For that matter, what did dormer windows have to do with the Rainbow Maker? Don't listen to him, the plant full of buds said. He's a perfect fool. And what may, may I ask are you, Mo asked the plant full of buds. <clears throat> I'm a budding genius, said the plant. I've 
been living in the fountain of knowledge for five years and I can and I can reach the pinnacle of perfection. Five years? asked Mo. There was no way he could wait five years to reach the pinnacle of perfection. He had to find the rainbow maker soon. Why so long? One of the best ways to reach the pinnacle of perfection is through knowledge, said the budding genius. But I must be very careful. If I drink too heavily from the fountain of knowledge, I'll end up like that. He pointed a bud at the lily in full bloom. Who is that? asked Mo. A blooming idiot said the budding genius. It's true that the plant knows a lot, and folks find it attractive when they first see it, but the truth is that plant's learned only things that don't make any difference to anybody. It's learned all the wrong things, as it were. That's not true, said the blooming idiot. I know how many inches it rained in London in 1642, and I bet you don't know <clears throat> the budding genius ignored the blooming fool's words. See what I mean? The blooming idiot also tried to reach the pinnacle of perfection by gaining knowledge, and after 20 years of living in the fountain of knowledge, it's nothing more than a perfect fool. It's sad. That is too bad, agreed Mo. but what about me? I need to reach the pinnacle of perfection this afternoon, <clears throat> the budding genius laughed. Nobody reaches the pinnacle of perfection in one day. In fact, the vast majority of folks never reach it at all. But the least you had better do is take one more drink of knowledge, but be careful what you swallow. Mo took a long drink, avoiding the question, what was the record number of eggs laid by a dinosaur, but swallowing the name Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence and was the third president of the United States, Mo said proudly. I know, said the budding genius. I bet neither of you know Thomas Jefferson had a pony named Fred when he was a little boy, said the blooming idiot. Mo and the budding genius laughed at the blooming idiot's smart, but at the same time worthless knowledge. Well, I must be on my way, said Mo. Good luck, friend, said the budding genius, but don't get your hopes too high. Mo set off again remembering his promise to high hopes to keep her alive in his heart, no matter how hard the going got. And this is obviously the longest chapter of the book. So, uh, we're going to break uh, the pinnacle of perfection and to uh, into two videos. So we will return to part two of the pinnacle of perfection coming right up. Go get a drink of water or whatever you need to do in this intermission. Bye guys.